Teenage boys from southern Indiana went camping together in 1971. Two were found dead the next day, killed after their cabin burned. The third teen was never found. It's the 50 year old cold case that haunts a small town in southern Indiana, but now it's been reopened and there's help from anthropology experts and the FBI. Investigators tell us they believe key evidence might have been overlooked in the 1971 cabin fire in Browntown. They were just the all American teenagers and you know, everybody remembers them just like they were. It was 1971. The three friends were students at Browntown, Indiana High School. 19 year old Jerry Autry, a star football player. 17 year old Stanley Robison, a member of the school's Christian standards group and 16 year old Mike Sewell, vice president of his class. A lot of people knew them. A lot of people remember them and um, not only the families, but you know, a lot of people have had questions. Those questions found their way back to Lieutenant Adam Nicholson's desk. A detective with the Jackson County Sheriff's Department, he says with a 50 year old case, he had to do his own research, finding out what happened and what was left to learn. You know, I just started looking online and, and finding these newspaper articles and uh, before reaching out to the family. In the local newspaper, he found pictures of a devastating cabin fire that happened on December 18th, 1971. The only pieces of the structure left behind were the sheet metal roof and wood burning stove. On site investigators seen looking on as smoke billows out from beneath the rubble. In this picture, a coroner points to the bones left behind. Investigators say the three boys had built the cabin and were camping out inside on the night of the fire. In the evidence box, he found Jerry Autry's class ring. It was what the coroner used to identify his remains. Stanley Robison's ring was also found and later returned to the family. But what about Mike Sewell? Investigation notes say his remains were never found and he was reported missing after the fire. He is still missing today. The family all thinks that someone out there knows something about it that just has never came forward. Lieutenant Nicholson says he believes Mike Sewell might have died in that fire and he's hoping for new information, but he's not just waiting around for it to come to him. Instead, he brought in experts to exhume the young men's remains, a team of archaeologists carefully collecting the bones left behind and taking them back to the lab for analysis. I mean, if she finds that you know, three of a certain bone, then we'll know that there's three people that were in the fire. If she doesn't find, you know, that will take the best candidates of the remains for DNA testing. And those will go to the FBI lab. He admits it's going to be a lengthy process, but if it brings answers and closure to a case haunting this small town for the last 50 years, he says that lengthy process will be more than worth it. And the detective tells us they are also digging deeper into the investigation to find out exactly how that fire started and who, if anyone, could be held responsible. If you have any information about the case, Lieutenant Nicholson would love to hear from you. You can give him a call at the Jackson County Sheriff's Department at 812-358-2141.